Okay, hello everyone. I have a new pen I want to show you here in this video sponsored by Squarespace. The only thing is I've had some trouble making this video because I am a little bit, I don't know, bashful about the amount of money that I spent on this pen. Usually I just wait for companies or various pen makers to send me a pen and then I just review whatever pens they send me. Uh, and sometimes I have some input, you know, I can like choose from their stock or something. But this time I thought, no, wait, I'm not going to wait for someone to send me a pen. I'm going to go out into the wild, wild world of pens. Uh, and it is a big world, a very big world. And I'm going to choose what pen I want. And uh, that ended up being pretty dangerous to my wallet. But uh, I didn't try to hold back. I didn't try to stop myself. I just kind of let it happen. And I ended up buying this pen, which was $800. Okay, so think of that what you will. I'm sure some people will think that's maybe just a couple people will think that's perf perfectly reasonable. And it's also fine to think that that's a, a, a crazy, uh, ex exorbitant, ludicrous amount of money to spend on a pen, which is a thought that's lurking in the back of my mind. And this is what I end up getting. We'll talk about it more, but I just want to draw with it. Let me, let me uncork it for you. Ooh. Ah, new pen smell. Nice. Right here it is. This is a custom handmade pen I got from a guy in Switzerland. And one of the big upsides, you know, I from that is that it came packaged in some Swiss newspapers. Check it out. I think it's uh, I think they're in German. And uh, is this the dating section? Does this, is this someone saying that they want an interesting and intelligent man? Uh, a hübsch Freundin? 40 to 50 years old. I am 46 years and have blue eyes. I'm just guessing if that's what that stuff says. I don't know what this word means. Gefühlswolle. I don't know. Anyways, so big perk. So I definitely feel like I got my money's worth as far as uh, authentic European uh, packaging. But look, this is, uh, I got the idea to buy a pen made out of Arushi lacquer when I was reviewing that Namiki pen, which is was like $1,600. But this one still has that same Arushi lacquer. And here's the, uh, this is the guy who makes it, Manu Propria. Pen, pens and pipes made in Switzerland. Beautiful red and black Irushi lacquer. Right, so there's a little, there's a little flyer. And if you look on this guy's website, there are so many different options for different types of finishes. So that's what appealed to me about paying to get a custom pen, because then I could choose Usually I can't choose the, the exact, this guy let me choose the exact length, the exact diameter, um, the exact, uh, you know, he let me choose if I wanted the pen cap to be bigger or the same size as the body. Uh, I got to choose to have my initials on the cap here. Uh, and I got to choose the this kind of, this finish here. I think this is like a stone finish. It's rough and smooth and you know, no other pen will be exactly like this. I I like it a lot. It came with a guarantee. Uh, here's a little explanation about how Arushi lacquer works. You know, it says the raw lacquer is exposed to the spring sun and stirred in a wooden container for many hours to reduce the water content of the lacquer. On and on it goes. And the five-year guarantee, that's pretty cool. It says Arushi pens... Sh shall not be kept. Sounds like some sort of biblical dictate. Uh, date of purchase uh, was November 15th, 2020. And it's uh, the model number. 
Which, uh, I don't know, this is the person's model number, yeah. So let's take a closer look at this. You'll see as I uncap this that uh, I've already filled it with ink, which is evident on the nib here. But you'll also notice that the nib is almost entirely uh, free of any marks. Except for over here on the side, it says 750, which I think alludes to the purity of the gold the nib is made from, or at least coated with. I don't really know. I think that 750 means the nib is 18 karat gold, which, I don't know, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. I'm not a metallurgist, but as you can see here, it writes, I don't know. It's very early in the morning right now, and I don't have very good handwriting early in the morning, so I apologize. As you can see, it has a very satisfying way of laying down the ink, even though this is paper that is very feathery and not maybe is not what most people would use for testing out fountain pens, but mostly I just want to draw with it. I'll share with you some more of my thoughts about this pen. Ups, downs, pros, cons, misgivings. Uh in a moment, but first I want to talk to you about Squarespace because it is pretty cool how easy it is for you to make your own professional looking, polished and complete website, All right? And you might be telling me, Peter, I don't know how to do web design or do programming, but that's okay because with Squarespace's drag and drop module system, it's very easy, even without any um, uh, classical web development training, to make a great looking website. But on the other hand, maybe you do know a little bit of coding or web development. Squarespace meets you wherever you're at and helps you to create a great looking website. So go ahead, get out there, make yourself a great space on the internet. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws for 10% off your first domain or website. All right, let's just draw with this now and I will um, tell you some more of my thoughts about it and other things. All right, so yeah, I almost didn't post this video. There are several times in the making of this video when I uh, tried to stop making it and move on to something else. And by that I mean that I recorded the intro part maybe three or four times. And even just this morning, after I had made the intro and done the drawings already, and all I had to do was come here and sit down and record the commentary, I was trying to think of different things I could sit down and make completely different videos and scrap this. I just, for some reason, I didn't feel comfortable with it. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like what I made and that's, that's completely fine. Sometimes we don't like what we made if it's just drawings or if it's dinner or I don't know, this video is weird to me and I can't completely figure out why. I think it's partly because I'm in a little bit of a, like a little bit of a creative slump. And that's partly because of like the winter blues, I've got a little bit of like cabin fever, a little bit of, you know, like that, that, that is compounded with, you know, like the COVID blues, you know, the whole, it's been a weird year, right? I'm sure you, I don't want to go into that whole thing. I'm sure you've heard endlessly about, you know, 2020 etc. It's just been a weird year in general. But look, I went through with it. Partly I didn't I didn't want my channel to be I mean I've already started doing it. I didn't want my channel to start becoming uh a channel that revolves around um you know like clickbait based on big dollar numbers in the title. Like I don't know there's some I feel like there's some YouTube channels that revolve just around you click because like, wow, they spent $800 or a thousand or a million dollars on something. I don't know. I'm, I'm really good at overthinking things and then talking myself out of things that would have been normally perfectly fine. Right. Anyways. Um, I think I'll put the title of this video, something like learning an $800 lesson or, you know, like 
Because basically, here's what here's the problem with this pen. Okay, here's the problem as far as I see it. Uh, I enjoyed ordering the pen. The process of picking it and choosing it and receiving it and having it and holding the pen. I liked all of that. But the problem is, okay, that this pen, I think no matter how much I spend on it, even if I spent $800,000 on it, to me, uh, I don't think it could ever compete just with the $35 I could spend on a Rotring Isograph as far as the pleasure I get from drawing with a Rotring Isograph. Like, that's just the best pen ever for me as far as drawing. And so I have to, I mean, like I've also recently bought a new guitar, which I haven't acquired yet. I should get here tomorrow, maybe. Like I realized that I think maybe playing music and um, collecting music gear, I think I realized that those are like <laughs> maybe two separate and distinct hobbies. Like, uh, like m playing music and collecting music gear like just collecting the gear can be a fun hobby. I mean, an, expen an expensive hobby, but I mean, you, you know, people who have lots of guitars or something, right? And I mean, you can only play one guitar at a time. I don't know. Collecting things is a pretty common hobby. And collecting pens can be a fine hobby. I don't know if it will ever be one of my hobbies because I don't know. I'm just not good at collecting pens. I don't know. I think I'd probably rather collect something else. I don't know what it would be, but th that's my main problem with this pen is that I like it. It look it turned the person who I ordered it from did everything completely right. Like I have no qualms or issues with how it turned out. Uh the look at the 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 proportions are perfect. I love the texture. I love how it looks. Like I love how uh to me it seems like it, it it's an alien artifact that maybe uh, c space colonists to a new planet unearthed. Well, I guess you can't call it unearthing it if it's on a different planet. Like if you go to Mars and dig something up, would you call it unmarsing it? But to me, if you unmars something, that means making it less Marsy. But if you find something on Mars and dig it up and, and dust it off, it would still seem pretty Marsy to me. If you dig, find something on Earth and dig it up and brush it off, and you would call that unearthing it. That doesn't sound as weird, but I guess it's all based on what you are or are not used to. Anyways, so it looked like it could be, to me, like a, a Martian artifact that had been unmarsed. Maybe an Earth an ancient earthen artifact that had been unearthed somewhere. But now it's uh, also a practical artifact that I can use to draw with. And it, it does inspire me in that way. Uh, I don't regret spending this much on it because uh, in that sense, I'm pretty bad with money. What do they say? A, a fool and his money are easily parted. There may be notes of that uh, in this situation or possibly strong resonating chords of that sentiment, but basically the lesson I learned here is that I feel like no matter how much I spend on a pen, even if I pick every single little uh, aspect of the pen and customize it, you know, if I choose the diameter and the width and the texture and the material and the nib and all of this stuff, I will never get a pen that I like using more than the Rotring Isograph 0 0.35. The whole time I was drawing with it here in this video, and you'll see that I did several different little sketches and drawings, and I wasn't really completely happy with any of them, which I think is partly due, with, due to some some other little artistic uh, unhappiness, some, some little artistic block problem. Uh, the whole time I was drawing with this pen, and, and honestly, the whole time I'm drawing with almost any pen that isn't the Rotring Isograph, I'm wishing that I'm drawing with the Rotring Isograph, okay? It's my one true love, okay? I don't know how else to say it. It's just how it is.
sometimes I mix it up just for this, I don't know, for the sake of the YouTube channel because it's hard to do an interesting intro or talk about the, <laughs> the road ring isograph just because it's just like a technical pen. And fountain pens are interesting, right? Because there's so much other different, so many different little things that go into them. You know, different people make them in different ways. There's different nibs, different materials. I don't know. So I do like fountain pens for that reason. And the, I do like the different ways they lay down ink a little more generously and different inks you can put in them. I don't know. So they do appeal to me. Like I, I can still see myself buying. I'm not saying... You might, you might imagine after this conversation I just had with myself in front of you that maybe I wouldn't buy more fountain pens, but I can actually still see myself buying more fountain pens. In fact, that's kind of the reason why I've started to do giveaways of some of my other fountain pens uh, is because I kind of wa I kind of do want to create for myself a more carefully curated fountain pen collection, <laughs> even if I don't use them, okay? Just like I said, I think that collecting musical gear and actually playing music is a separate, two separate hobbies, as weird and lame as that may sound. Uh, it, it, I think it can be the same for fountain pens, just like people, st stamp collecting is a, is a real hobby, okay? Nobody looks down on them for saying like, oh, you collect stamps, but... Do you ever mail anything? I'm sure people who collect, actually I don't know how stamp collecting works at all. Maybe those people do only collect stamps that they collect off of uh, pieces of mail that they actually have, you know, that went through the mail. I kind of lost my train of thought right now, actually. I think sometimes I go on, I go through, t I like I have like a metaphor within a metaphor and then I, I've lost my way. Anyways, yeah, so that's that, that, that's why I'm trying to give away some of my fountain pens that I haven't, um, I mean, they're, they're like some cool fountain pens I have, but I didn't specifically choose them for myself, so they don't mean quite as much to me, even though they're still nice and some people could use them and enjoy them, so um, I think I'll do another giveaway. I have like seven more of the Muji fountain pens, which the Muji fountain pens are like $15 maybe. Those are also great to use. And I think I even like drawing with the Muji fountain pens maybe better than this $800 one I bought, which is crazy to say. Better than almost any other fountain pen I bought for any price. So I have, I'll do like a giveaway of like seven more of those. I think I have that many more. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. So I think I need to switch up my, do a little, I go through these phases where I like, draw for a while and then I do like a little medium switch up, right? Sometimes I go and I maybe do some painting or, uh, you know, draw with like 3D pens, those 3D pens for a while or do, do some wood burning for a while. There's something, some other creative pursuit where I step away from drawing for a while. Cause it's, and, and then after I get bored of that, my time is like, I feel like my time is maybe 90% drawing and then like 10%, one other thing to give myself a break from drawing, right? I think it's okay. I think it's about time for that 10%. And right now I'm kind of uh, brainstorming that maybe I'll do, I don't know if this is actually what it'll turn out to be. Don't get your hopes up if this is like your favorite thing. I'm kind of imagining doing uh, some 3D modeling. I, I think it would be cool to like doodle in 3D, like 3D shapes and stuff like that. I don't know how it'll actually turn out. Maybe I'll just do some tutorials and stuff. Blender, I think, maybe is a good program. Let me know if you know of any other good programs for that sort of thing. I don't know. I know at least Blender's free, but if you know of any other good programs that are like equal to or better than Blender, I uh, let me know. Anyways, sorry if this was a weird video, but thanks for watching, everyone. Love y'all. Have a good. Have a good rest of your year. When I'm recording this right now. It's um, near the end of 2020, but you could be watching this at any time. You could be watching this at the end of 2021, and I don't know how 2021 would have gone, okay? Hopefully 2021 went better than 2020, but we don't know. Or maybe you're watching this at the beginning of 2021, in which case I'm still hoping that the rest of your year goes well, okay? Or maybe you're some sort of weird time traveler and you're watching this near the end of 20, 
2015 or something. And I still hope the rest of your year goes well. Anyways, okay, bye everyone. Take it easy. Uh, and uh, yeah, good luck with all your pen collecting. Even if you only spend $1 on a pen, just know that it could still bring you just as much joy, okay? That's what I learned here. The dollar amount you spend on a pen doesn't equal how much joy you can get from it. All right, okay, goodbye.